Welcome to my Mastering the VMware vSphere 6. In this chapter, we're looking at chapter 13, Monitoring VMware vSphere's Performance. Because that's the nice thing, is once you got your virtualization infrastructure up and running, well, how do you make sure it's performing the way it should be? How do you know it's performing optimal? And that's a huge thing, because there's lots of built-in features uh, that people don't even uh, think about, or talk about, or even look at. Alarms health summaries, performance summaries. These are all really key things for data center management. Uh, performance, uh, performance monitoring. These are all critical aspects of data center management. vCenter server provides, again, almost all of this pre-built into the vSphere environment. Alarms, information and health summaries, performance summaries and related objects, all pre-built in. So let's talk about using the alarms. So the alarms are uh, created for VMs, hosts, networks, and data stores. This is based off of a predefined trigger in vCenter. For example, when a data store gets too full or when a VM is using too much processing power or when a host is becoming unstable or is running low on resources, these are all alarms. So Based off of the object, these alarms can monitor uh, resource consumption, the state of the object, and conditions that can alert you know, based off of certain criteria within those conditions, such as a high resource usage or a low resource usage. Maybe that will alert you uh, either via an alarm or via an alarm and an email. Just kind of depends on how you have it set up. vSphere uh, alarms, you can also use SNMP taps to uh, monitor and track uh, vSphere. An action can also, also happen automatically based off of certain criteria. You can have it run scripts. So if a VM is running a certain criteria and uh, that criteria is met, you can have it run a, specific, a particular script. Maybe that script cleans up space. Maybe that script uh, resets the VM. It doesn't really matter what the script does. It's just you define what it can do. vRealize Operation Manager and vRealize Log Insight uh, integrate with vCenter Alarms to provide deeper understanding of these issues. Some of the predefined alarms could be, again, storage, cluster experiencing uh, HA errors, low disk space, high VM uh, CPU usage, high VM memory usage, uh, latency within the disks, or again, fault tolerance. Alarms have two configurable states, warning and critical. So actions can be set for the transition based off of directions at both critical levels. Examples could include normal to warning, warning to critical, critical to warning, and warning to normal. These are the states that they can go in and uh, actions that we can set. There are great tools for alerting to specific conditions that may not uh, provide detailed information. So vCenter actually has a lot more features for creating and analyzing these uh, events. And that is dealing with the performance charts. The performance charts actually go way more in depth than previous versions of vSphere. So you can install agents inside of a VM, will provide accurate details about the behavior of those resources consumed by those VMs. We can do an overall layout. If we're looking at storage or processing power or kind of however you really want to do it, you can do a advanced layout where you actually have multiple VMs. This is kind of dependent, again, how you want to have this set up. But you manipulate this until you get the reports and the layouts that you want based off of whatever criteria you're using. Charts time can be a range or they can be set to real time. They can be set to a day, a week, a month, a year, or any custom value. Automatic refreshes for real time data is the last hour of data and refreshes every 20 seconds. An overview layout works well if you need a broad overview of the performance. But if you want specific items, 
overview layout might not be the best option. Metrics uh, that you can have within your charts, CPU, cluster service, data store, disk, memory, network power, storage adapter, storage path, systems, virtual flash, virtual disk, virtual machine operations, vSphere, replication. What gets interesting here is each of these also have subcategories like disk, disk latency, things of that nature. So, I mean, lots of flexibility, lots of different metrics that you can use. Mastering VMware's vSphere is actually more about being able to utilize the monitoring and performance features because once you have the infrastructure up and running, you're not doing that every day. You're maintaining, you're monitoring. So that's where the monitor really comes into play. We're looking more at the command line based tools. That's kind of interesting because there are lots of command line tools that you can use like ESX top that you can actually look at major features like CPU, disk, memory, and network on a particular ESXi in real time. You have to remember ESXi is Linux. So you can always go back to the command line in Linux and access it. Also, you can use the VMA to run commands against ESXi. That's gonna be a VM um, management tool. We've been calling it vCenter, but that's the standalone Windows installation. You can have a VM run tool called VMA. So ESXi top shows only a single ESXi host. And this is ran on individual hosts, but you can uh, check resources. You can look at monitoring. You can look at uh, CPU usage, at memory usage. You can show uh, slow moving averages, long terming averages, swap averages. You can do lots of things with the CLI. You can look at monitoring uh, network statistics. You can monitor disk IO statistics. All of this leads to better troubleshooting. So example, you could have something like help desk ticket that's been submitted indicating that application owner isn't getting the expected level of performance on a particular server. So what do you do? I'll let you do the rest of that. You can start looking at CPU loads. You can start comparing usage for the VM versus the CPU usage of other VMs on that host. You can start looking at resource pools. Again, individual VMs as opposed to all VMs on the machine. You can determine whether there is a high uh, ready time for the VM machine, resulting in a higher CPU usage. You can look at increasing the CPU shares and give the VM more opportunity to run. Maybe even increase the amount of memory allocated to it. You could reduce the number of VM CPUs on that host and on other VMs to see if Maybe it's an allocation issue. If the host is not ready in a DRS cluster, maybe try adding it to one. Verify that the uh, VMware tools is installed. Verify that the ballooning drivers are installed. Verify that you actually have the appropriate resources to manage all of the VMs that are on that machine. Make sure it's not a ballooning issue. Because again, you have, at least here with memory usage, you have finite X amount of memory. And let's say you have 70 gigs of memory. If you accidentally over allocate it to 90 or 96 gigs of memory, well, if you're more and more VMs are using their memory, you may end up in a situation where there is no physical memory left. So even though you allocated lots of memory, doesn't mean there's physical memory to be allocated. Sadly, that's very common. You can reduce memory space on VMs. Uh, if the memory reservations for VM is set, you can always work on either uh, making, uh, increasing it or decreasing it depending on the situation. Migrate VMs off of it. If a particular ESXi host is maxing on a memory resources, 
try moving uh, the VM to a different machine. If we're talking network usage, verify VMware tools is installed. Try using a better NIC driver. Make sure that you're using the VMX uh, Net3 driver. This again is only available if VMware tools is installed. Maybe see if other uh, how other VMs are running on the same ESXi. Look at maybe moving them. Look at the packets that are being lost. Look at the network connectivity to that host. Lots of things that you can do with network usage. Maybe look at assigning different uh, physical mix to uh, a virtual switch. Maybe if the physical ports are going out, maybe use separate physical mix to handle different types of traffic. That way you don't have all traffic going through the embedded NIC. Maybe you have iSCSI separated from VM or data traffic. Maybe you have vMotion set up to use a different NIC. Again, different options. Ensure that the physical NIC capacity is large enough to handle the appropriate NICs. For example, you wouldn't put, you know, 100 VMs using a physical 10100 NIC. That's not realistic. You may have to go to a gig or a 10 gig physical switch. Because again, does the physical NIC support the amount of bandwidth that you're trying to push through it? If packets are being dropped at the virtual switch port, maybe increase the virtual network driver uh, ring buffer. We did not cover that, and I don't think I've ever seen where to do that, but that's one of the suggestions our author made. Verify the reported speed in the duplex. Maybe you accidentally set everything to half duplex. I mean, it doesn't hurt to check. Maybe look at making sure that everything is running in full duplex mode. Use virtual uh, VNICs that are TSO uh, capable. Verify that TSO jumbo frames are enabled. Uh, jumbo frames. Make sure you're using the correct MTU size for your frames. Maybe your uh, physical switches are sending you jumbo frames, but your NIC is only capable of a traditional 1500 MPU. The other thing that you may want to check. Moving on, lastly, is disk usage. Increase virtual machine memory. If, we're noting there are, if we notice there is an issue with I.O. activity for the system memory and uh, disk access. Because again, maybe we're getting I.O. latency because we're running out of physical memory and it's having to use hard drive as memory. Swap files. Use vendor array tools to determine the array performance. So maybe if we're saving all the data storage on a RAID 5, make sure we're using the RAID array correctly. Make sure the controller card that is managing that array is correct. Again, maybe we're using all SATA 3 uh, hard drives, but the RAID array controller card is only SATA 1. So that'd be limiting the data throughput based off of the SATA backplane. You want to make sure that we're using the appropriate hardware. I've actually had to do that. We did one deployment where we were only able to get a black backplane that was SATA 2, even though all of our hard drives are SATA 3. So we actually lost performance based off the backplane. But in that instance, that backplane was the best backplane that we could get for that situation. So we actually had to lose the performance because we couldn't get a newer backplane. So there are, or there are issues and there are concerns like that. Configuring the host bus adapters and the RAID controllers for optimal use. Maybe look at things like better controllers. Maybe look at dedicated SANs, uh, fiber channel, iSCSI, things of that nature. Maybe look at using resource intensive VMs, separating them out so that maybe the operating system is on one set of uh, drives and the data access portion is on another. Maybe data, different, data stores at different SANs. Maybe we have one SAN that handles just the primary operating system of all the VMs and we have a different SAN that has better storage like SSDs and that's where we use the data. That's actually what I do in my deployments. I actually have three iSCSI SANs and based off of what we're doing, the data store gets placed on a specific iSCSI SAN for example, host uh, operating systems goes on a, a SAS drive. 
where data is on an SSD, depending on the type of data. Some go on SSD, some go on SAS, but again, it kind of depends on how critical that data is. Then lastly, every VM that I have has a additional access to a third SAN that happens to be bulk SATA drives, just for backups. So again, it just kind of depends how you're doing your deployment and what host bus adapters you're using, what RAID controller adapter you're using, and how do you actually want to wire it all up. On systems with sizable RAM, maybe disable RAM trimming. Maybe look at combining disk I.O. when there's a higher than a single uh, HBA capacity. Maybe use multipathing or multilinks when we're using dedicated SANs. Multiple paths means multiple ways to get to the I.U. or get to the data store, better I.O. efficiencies. For ESXi hosts, create the virtual disks as pre-allocated. Long term, that saves uh, CPU cycles. That's actually the end of this chapter. There is so much in troubleshooting, but a big part of that is you start looking at different ways to look at the th uh, four critical resources, processor, memory, network, and data stores, because there's lots that can go wrong with this. Again, I want to thank you. Have a good day.